So I wanted to do another update video like this because technically on June 1st here in Mexico, um, states around the country were sort of given the green light to um, start opening things depending on, on where they stood in the, the sort of red light categories of, of uh, Mexico. For those that don't know, Mexico has set up a system where uh, different states are rated as either red, orange, yellow, or green, um, depending on the number of cases. Um, and I believe most, if not probably more than 75% of the states are in the red. The red means that the cases have continued to rise over the course of um, a week, I believe. And then in order to move down in the stoplight colors, you have to have uh, two weeks straight of decreased uh, case numbers. So it's something that's sort of ongoing. <laughs> the government here in Mexico City believe that uh, Mexico City will likely be green by September um, at the rate, but currently here in Mexico City <sighs> um, cases continue to rise. Uh, the number of deaths steadily stay the same. Uh, there are peaks uh, on different days, but we have yet to reach our sort of like peak on the curve uh, from what I've seen uh, and I've been following along with the Mexico City numbers and um, yeah, it's not great at the minute. That doesn't necessarily mean that things are not going to open until September, but it's like a slower process of reopening. So once you're in the um, orange category, certain things can open. Once you're in the yellow category, other things can open. And then obviously once in the green, pretty much anything can open with, um, you know, modified courses of action with masks, with um, sort of uh, keeping, keeping a distance. Um, so yeah, it's it's been weird time for sure. I thought like a lot would change on June 1st um, and speaking to a few of my friends here in this video like I did in that video that I did Gosh, now I think it was like two months ago in early April about what's been happening here in Mexico um, Not a ton has changed actually since April I would say probably things are stricter um, as of June 1st than they were back in early April uh, so yeah, it's 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 it is what it is but i want to keep you all updated on what's happening here in mexico because i get questions constantly uh emails all the time and comments in these videos about what it looks like now uh, are things reopening and um yes <laughs> they are um but it depends largely on the uh the state the governors of those states and what they determine um is is a safe time to start reopening unfortunately where i live in mexico state uh, sort of in the Mexico City metro area, things are pretty lax. Um, I still see people every day not wearing masks. Uh, I went to our Tianguis just this past week, which comes once a week, and it's the first time I've been there in a fair few weeks, and it's just, it's chaos. Like, there's no, there's no social distancing. There's people not wearing masks. Um, when I first started uh, trying to go le like less frequently um, back in April all the stalls had uh, hand sanitizer and stuff um, all the workers were wearing masks lots of people wearing gloves but now it's almost like people can't be bothered there's no one sort of cracking down on the rules or regulations so there's very few masks hardly anyone's keeping any social distancing um, there's no hand sanitizer anywhere in sight anymore and uh, yeah it was pretty disappointing and I think a fair representation of how a lot of people are taking uh, taking this at the minute, especially around around smaller neighborhoods in Mexico. A lot of smaller neighborhoods definitely here in Mexico City. People want to get on with their lives and they're not really realizing the impact that that is having on their communities. So yeah, at the end of our street recently, the local uh, government put up a big sign um, telling people to stay inside. It, it says that this area is insecure because there are um, cases in the in the region. Uh, and there's an airplane that flies overhead every single day that tells you to stay inside. Matt, now more than ever, stay inside. Um, the federal sort of stay inside order has now been pushed until June 15th. Um, I, I don't know if that's going to change. Again, even when the federal order is over and um, June 15th comes and goes, it's still up to the state 
to decide. Uh, and as you'll see from some of the conversations that I had with friends in uh, the Yucatan and in um, Jalisco, those states are definitely taking it far more seriously than they are here in Estado de Mexico. Um, so yeah, it's great to see that there are places that are taking it seriously and there are governments that are um, sort of making sure that people follow the rules, even if unfortunately it is by a sort of fear of, of having to pay a fine. I'd say the biggest difference that I've noticed here in, in Metro Mexico City since June 1st is that there are so many more airplanes flying overhead. Pretty much everywhere in Mexico City is on the flight path. Um, so before COVID happened, before March, um, planes were flying overhead probably every five minutes um, that I could hear. You know, some had already reached an altitude that, that there's no sound, I guess. Um, so yeah, it was, it was constant all the time. It sort of just became part of the noise, um, part of another sound that you hear here. Um, but during, probably starting around April, almost no airplanes flew overhead. May the same, hardly any airplanes. And then suddenly on June 1st, Luke and I started noticing like, I'm not airplanes, like maybe every every 10 or 15 minutes. And now we've been paying attention to it, of course. Um, and and there are probably, there's probably an airplane every 20 minutes now, um, sometimes more frequently. Uh, so yeah, the airport was never closed. Um, the, the borders and the, and the airports here in Mexico were never shut, but other places shut their borders, right? Other places stopped flying. Um, so <laughs> I guess they're back open. I don't know, but uh, what I do know is that there are so many more flights flying overhead again, um, whether domestic or international, I don't know, but uh, definitely that is a big change. So people are traveling again, uh, airplanes and airlines are running uh, more frequently now. I have a friend who works uh, in the US for Southwest and she was telling me that starting June 7th, I believe, uh, there's gonna be more and more flights between the US and Cancun and uh, the US and Cabo. So things they are changing. So yeah, that's the update here in Mexico City, um, in the metro Mexico City area. Really not much has changed other than the fact that it seems like people are less interested <laughs> in following the rules. Um, the rules are very lax. I've seen police officers walk past people who have no masks on and, and say nothing. Um, and yeah, um, should you come here right now? Probably not. Uh, I, I would not recommend it. We're gonna stay inside. Uh, we're gonna see what happens from June 15th um, and go from there. Um, so first up is going to be Jimmy. Jimmy is a friend of mine of uh, a fellow travel blogger. He and his girlfriend Ta travel the world and obviously since Covid have uh, been grounded, been been staying uh, with Jimmy's family in upstate New York uh, until they had to leave and uh, because Ta is not American her visa was running out there's no sort of option to renew anything like that at the minute especially in the US. Um, so they were forced to leave and they are now in Mexico they flew into Cancun just a couple of days ago. Uh, I'll link to their video somewhere uh, so you can check that out and see what it was like flying into Cancun. It was very interesting to watch. Uh, and now they're in Puerto Morelos, which is about a half an hour, I believe, south of Cancun. And uh, Jimmy explains what it's been like there. Just a heads up as well, uh, the sound was a little bit messed up in the video. It doesn't align properly. Um, yeah, zoom. <laughs> It's a struggle every day, but I hope you enjoy it. We actually reordered our tickets, and then like it, it was like really good in Mexico at the time that we had ordered tickets. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I started seeing stuff spreading. I was like, well, we already have like five plane tickets to get there. There's, like, yeah. No turning back now. Yeah. And then thankfully, where we are, there was only two cases, but Cancun had like a thousand cases, so like thirty million cases. Um, what's it been like? I mean, you haven't been there that long, I guess, but. Is it? Does no, it I mean, we've been here like two days and everything is like closed. It's like a ghost town. There's mm -hmm. no, like if you were going to go to Mexico or Asia, like tacos, street food, you know, there's nothing. There's nobody around. There's like only carry out and restaurants. I mean, it's kind of like it was back home in New York where I was. So it's not really that big of a difference. But all the locals, they're very positive that this is going to change really soon. Yeah. They said that it was either going to change Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So yeah, I, I heard that a lot 
of places yeah, we're going to open up on the first. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But the, I guess the locals still haven't gotten, like, the clearance from the government. So yeah. They're not really sure if it's actually a positive or not. But yeah, it's not bad. Do you have to wear a mask outside? Are other people wearing masks? Yeah. Yeah, everybody has to wear a mask. I mean, even, like, we were riding the bike down the road, and it was only me and Todd, and we, I didn't have a mask on. The cops were wild. They were like, put your mask on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think it was a big of a deal. I was riding down the street on a bicycle. Yeah. Next up, I'm talking to Alex from Querétaro. Uh, she's been living there now for several years with her boyfriend, and um, I spoke to her in the last video about sort of what it's been like in Querétaro. Uh, she wasn't going out very much, there was a lot of uh, fear surrounding what it, what would happen if, if she or her boyfriend uh, got the virus and, and uh, had to be separated and, and all that sort of stuff. So um, now she gives a little bit more detail about what it's been like in Querétaro along the streets and how the city and the state are handling it there. How's it going? How's how's Querétaro? It's good. <laughs> I, I hope I have new stuff to report to you. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to be going out a little more than you were before. Well, we went out three times on Friday, which was like a lot for us. But in one day? To, in one day. We had to go to the ATM in the morning. Um, then we came back to the house. And then we went to buy chicken just down the street from our house. And then later that evening, we ran to like our, our corner store. So it was all within like a very close radius and very short trips. But I was like exhausted at the end of the day. I was like, <laughs> so much. Well, it's fresh air. I mean, I feel bad that like we haven't been back to like you know the market or anything like that but yeah. I just I, I mean we have like the chicken guy like I said just down the street from us and we have like the vegetable delivery that I told you about last time which comes you know when it, it comes next day when we order it yeah so I just like I mean we've been just trying to go out like as little as possible and yeah as far as talks about like reopening here and get it though like I'm not like a hundred percent sure about this, but like I think the other day, like people were protesting. Like there was like not protesting, um, but there was sort of like a drive thing because we could hear like a ton of car horns. Yeah, like for hours. Um, and I saw like on one person's like Instagram stories that like, uh, and they said that people were like protesting like Amlo, like trying to get him oh. to like reopen the country. Right. Like, I guess the 15th is somehow not soon enough for people here. Wow. And when you go out, like, are there, what's it like? Are people still, like, in the streets? Or is it starting to feel like more people are going out? Um, no. Like, it actually felt like less people, like, I mean, the last time I was out was, like, at the end of, or, yeah, at the beginning of May, really. Like, at, like, when I did, like, the long walk to, like, the bank and stuff. Um, and this time it felt like, on Friday, it felt like there were much fewer, like, there, there was not as many people out. Right. And so, things are still open, like, food places, or what? When you go past, didn't you say when you went past last time, there were, like, restaurants some still restaurants open? open? Yeah, it felt like, I mean, we were also out a lot earlier this time. We were out at, like, 9.30, but in the morning, but like during like the, it was during the week. So you would think like stuff that was going to be open was probably going to be open by 9.30. Yeah. So it seems still pretty quiet. Like the downtown here, not many people were out and everybody I saw out was like wearing a mask. That's good. So. Next up is Cassie, who is always a wealth of information about Merida and the Yucatan. Um, especially since this virus started about what's been going on there, what's open and not open. Um, she's, she's very active in her community and uh, definitely has a lot of good information to share for those of you that are interested in what's been happening in Merida. How are things otherwise? Uh, coronavirus wise, well, we've just finally finishing Le Seca, so alcohol is being sold again, sort of. It's only being sold online. 
there were massive delays in trying to get in getting it. Right. It's a week of online selling only. I think it's to prevent everybody zooming into the shops, super excited and just having crowds everywhere because everyone's desperate for a drink. Yeah. Um, but it's so we ordered with a beer com with a beer manufacturer, a really good one with Patito, and it hasn't arrived yet, sadly. Um, but I'm sure it will. Uh, other people, you can go down to the local six and get their WhatsApp number and then WhatsApp them and then they will deliver to your house, but you walk to the shop to get it. So lockdown is still like really full on there. Officially, yes. Officially, right. nothing has changed for us. Um, I think realistically, people are starting to get frustrated and a bit bored. We've been on lockdown for so long and we still apparently haven't reached our peak yet. Um, and of course, certain sections of society really have never been on lockdown because they can't be, just like the rest of the country. Yeah. So some of us are completely locked in our houses while other people aren't, so that's really hard. Um, I took a walk, I had to go and drop something off in the center of town the other day. So I took a walk around um, Plaza Grande and around the main streets, like on page 60, and, and all around um it was really interesting okay. there were definitely fewer people there were lots and lots of police the police have all got masks on they're super friendly they're super they don't seem to mind too much that people are on the streets they're accepting that people are out and about they're helping they're giving direction but you absolutely can't be on the street without a mask you have that's complete law here you have right. to have a mask even so in your car stopping people around. and being like where's your face mask kind of stuff yeah, and people get fined if they're not wearing them. Wow. It's like a different yeah. world. Hospitals are hospitals are full-ish, I think. I think there are about seven hospitals here dealing with coronavirus patients. That's a lot. Yeah, that's unofficially what I've heard. Right. Um, IMS-based hospitals, or these are like private hospitals? I don't know. I don't know. I think people are still... Um, Official and unofficial are still quite different, I think. Or maybe it's becoming more, maybe the numbers are getting more in line now, actually, is what I think is happening. There's been a lot of deaths from um, uh, atypical pneumonia because there's no testing done yeah. still, really. Yeah, no, yeah so it's, it's kind of weird here. Like, we're still queuing up outside shops um, if we want to go to the supermarket or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure much else has changed except that people are feeling frustrated. Schools are definitely not going back. Finally, I spoke again to Stephanie, who is over in Puerto Vallarta. Uh, you'll remember from the last video that she has been living in Puerto Vallarta for, for quite a while. She works at a school there and um, she gives us the down law on what's been happening in Puerto Vallarta, in the, the Jalisco, the state of Jalisco in general. How's it going there? Um... Yeah. <laughs> Things are like slowly getting back to normal. Okay. You know? Sorry, my hair's like really crazy right now. Um, more and more normal, but we're still supposed to wear our masks when we're outside. Okay. But it's really like, how do I say this? They're like picking and choosing when to enforce it. Right. So, for example, I was just talking to a lady in my neighborhood, and she she's in her probably, I don't know, 50s, and she was saying that her and her friend were at the park right by my house um, early yesterday morning, and uh, it was just the two of them. There was no one else in the whole park. They were there with their dogs, and she took her mask down to take a sip of coffee, and a police officer came by and yelled at her to put her mask back up. But then if you go to the same park in the evening, there's probably 40 people, none of whom are wearing masks. Right. And a few, like a week ago, two weeks ago, um, when I was running, I passed a group of police officers that were kind of like tucked away, you know, because um, I was like going down this little path. And there was probably 30 of them. None of them were wearing masks. They were all drinking beer at like 9 a.m. Like great, close, great, great, great. Together, not social distancing. <laughs> so, uh, but this the Port of Ireland itself, like things are opening back up, like restaurants and stuff. Oh, you yeah, see, some of them would never even close before. Yeah, exactly. So, not some of them had never closed, um, especially in the more local neighborhoods. They just stayed open the entire time, and now, though, pretty much like everything is opening in terms of restaurants. I think technically nightclubs aren't supposed to be open, so I don't think those are um but like beach clubs and stuff 
Um, and the beaches are back open. No, so like beaches are closed actually, technically, but then people go to the beach at sunset. So it's very confusing. It's like, you're not supposed to be doing this, but everybody's doing it. Right. And so it's, so it's not really being like enforced anymore. No, but then like the, the trail that I like to run down, they've still blocked that off or like every few days they'll block it off and then someone tears the block down. I don't really get what's happening. Um, when you go into supermarkets, so for a while, something weird that they were doing was they, they stopped sales of non-essential items. So basically you couldn't buy anything except for food and I think toilet paper. So if you had to buy like, let's say, I don't know, shoes or underwear or whatever, you couldn't buy it. Even though yeah, it was at the store still. Yes, they blocked it off like with, with like caution tape and all the stores and then now they're apparently selling those things again. Right. Yeah. Is there and talk then, of like when all that stuff is going to reopen again, like the beaches and like they normally were, so that you don't have to go in dark? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, they were saying potentially June 15th or maybe July 1st. Okay. And then now hotels after they've like proven that they're taking certain measures, which are also kind of vague, um, they can start being at half capacity, but like pools are supposed to be closed. Um, public areas are supposed to be closed. Buffets can't happen. And, and then Nairi right next door, um, the state right next door, they're selling alcohol again. So things are like slowly getting back to normal, yeah. but it feels like pretty empty. Have you crossed the state border recently? Yeah, it's fine now. There's no blockade. No, I've been going every weekend. Right, okay. My best friend who I've been like quarantining with, um, her and her daughter live across the state border. So I've been going and spending the weekends with them. Nice. Yeah, now that it's back open. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, I hope it gave you some insight into what's been happening here in Mexico, maybe made it a little bit clearer that um, <laughs> we still have a long way to go uh, before things open back up for tourism, before things open back up for people to to live any sort of sense of, of normalcy here. Um, yeah, if you did find this helpful and you know anyone else who would find it helpful, please share this video. Uh, these sort of interviews <laughs> and clipping them all together is quite a labor of love. Uh, it takes quite a long time to organize and, and execute, uh, so it would mean the world to me if you passed it along and um, shared it with, with all your Mexico curious friends. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye!